In previous videos, I covered scene manager events as well as scene load data. We'll be using both of those in this tutorial. I already have a script present, which will load a player into new scene when they enter a trigger. Let's talk about what the code does and then afterwards I'll demonstrate it. First, notice I have a server attribute with logging off above the trigger enter method. This is because I only want this code to run on the server. Clients should never have to access the scene manager outside of using events. When a scene load or unload occurs on the server, it automatically synchronizes to the client. Next, I get the network object off the collider which entered the trigger. If a network object is found, then I try to load the scene. You could load a scene under any condition, but in my scenario, I only want players to trigger the scene load. In the load scene method, I check if the owner is active for the network object. If not, I exit the method. This is another optional check that ensures only players can trigger the load. Ultimately, the previously shown codes were just some sanity checks. Moving onward is the only code required to actually load a scene. First, I'm going to create a new scene load data using the the scene name constant above to tell which scene to load. In this example, we're going to load a scene by name and that name is new scene. It's worth mentioning that this example is not using scene stacking, which I know many of you are curious about. I'll be updating this code later in the video to show you how to use scene stacking. Next is an optional step that's populating which objects to move to the new scene. Perhaps you want to move one or more networked objects, player owned or not, into the new scene. This is most commonly used when you're replacing scenes and you don't want such objects destroyed during the scene change. I want to preserve the player which entered the trigger, so I'm populating moved network objects with that player. Here we have the replace options. I talked about this in the scene load data video already, but just as a quick summary, I am using replace all, which will replace all scenes even if they are not managed by the fish networking scene manager. This means if you have a UI scene, for example, that scene would also be unloaded as well. If you only wanted to unload scenes handled by the fish networking scene manager, you will use replace option online only. Naturally, if you don't want to replace any scenes, you will use replace option none, and this will load the new scenes as additive. And finally, we load the scene. I'm calling load connection scenes, passing in the player I want to load the scene for, and the scene load data, which is ultimately a configuration file for the scene manager. Load connection scenes can also take a collection of players, such as if you want to load the scene for more than one player. And if perhaps you want to load the scene preemptively on the server and drop players in later, you can remove the connection argument entirely. With that said, yes, you can load other players into the same scene later using the same code we just talked about. As the name suggests, load connection scenes will only load the scenes for the specified connections. Changing to load global scenes will load the scenes for all current and future players. If I were to change to load global scenes as shown, then my current players would load new scene and players which join later will automatically load new scene as well. It's important to note that you cannot stack global scenes since all clients share the same instance. And with that said, players will have visibility of each other no matter what so long as a global scene exist. I'm going to change this back to load connection scenes and demonstrate the code. I put a green cube in my scene with a trigger collider and added the scene loader script we just discussed. When a player enters this cube, new scene will load for them. Don't forget to add your scenes to the build settings as well. I started as host and now I'm going to move towards the box. My camera went missing because I was using the camera in the first scene which was replaced. However, if I expand new scene, you can see that my player was successfully moved and that the new scene is loaded. There are a variety of other scenes that showed up as well, moved objects holder, delay destroy, etc. These scenes are used temporarily internally by the scene manager. You can unload them afterwards if you like, but keeping them present does not harm anything. Before continuing on to scene stacking, I want to demonstrate what this looks like with the client and server separated. And yes, the jitter on client movement is normal. This is because the server does not need to interpolate the movement. Now I'm going to move the client into the trigger. It would appear as though the client did not change scenes, but the server did. I assure you, however, this is not the case. I mentioned before that the camera in the first scene gets destroyed and as a result the client sees whatever was last rendered. Nonetheless the client is in the new scene on the server as well locally. Let's switch the roles real quick. Here is a new build with the executable as server and editor as client. Now let's see what happens when I move into the trigger. Just like we saw when the editor was server the client is in fact loaded into the new scene and the camera was destroyed. So when you are working with multiple scenes keep these things in mind. Also it's definitely worth mentioning that if you are running as host all scenes that are occupied will be loaded as host no matter what. This is because the server must have the scenes loaded for the players to occupy them. It's not that the client host that has the scene loaded, but rather the server side. 
Now let's cover scene stacking. I'm going to drop in some new code real quick. I have the new code in and made a small change to the existing code. The first thing to note is I changed how scene load data is made. The previous code is commented out. The new code generates the scene load data a little bit different. I first generate a scene lookup data using the stacked scene handle as well as the scene name. I talked about the importance of the scene handle in the scene load data video. In short, if loading using a handle, then players will load into that specific instance of the scene, which is why we specify it here. Note that if the handle is zero, which is our default value for stacked scene handle, then the scene name is used instead. Another important thing to mention is I added these particular constructors in version 146, which will be available during the release of this video. With the scene lookup data made, I pass it into the scene load data constructor. Next is an important part of scene stacking, and that setting this allows stacking to false. As discussed in the scene load data video in version 2.0 and up, this allow stacking is being renamed to allow stacking and the value will be inversed. The remainder code in this method is unchanged. So now let's look at how we get the stacked scene handle. I added a boolean named scene stack. If this is true, then the code below will check to assign stacked scene handle. This is simply a toggle for you to experiment with. Beneath that is stacked scene handle, which if not zero is the scene handle of the first loaded scene. Going back up real quick, I should definitely mention that if this allows stacking stacking is false and the scene handle is zero, then a new instance of the scene will be made. This is how you create multiple instances of the same scene. Whereas if the handle is not zero, connections will be loaded into that scene instance. Back down, I subscribe to the on load end event of my scene manager. This is so I can know when a scene load occurs and grab the handle of the loaded scenes. Also worth mentioning, be sure to unsubscribe when the object is destroyed. And done. Okay, now let's move on to that event callback here. Keeping in mind that the server controls scene loading and unloading. If the callback is not running on the server side, then I want to exit the method. If I'm not using scene stacking, also exit. And if the stack scene handle is already set, exit as well. Realistically, you will track multiple handles, but to keep this simple, we're just using one. And last, if scenes were loaded, then set the stack scene handle to the first loaded scene. This can be whatever you like, but in this demonstration, I know we're only loading one scene, so we'll always use the first. We now know that when the first client loads a scene, we'll grab the handle from that loaded scene and load future clients into that handle. I also did check the scene stack boolean on the script. I'm going to go ahead and move the client into the box and you can see that they entered the box and that they are on the other scene. And if I expand new scene, you can see that they are in there as well. You'll also notice that both new scene and the first scene, main, are loaded. I mentioned that the host needs all scenes loaded and this is a demonstration of that. Now I'm going to go ahead and move the host client into the trigger. Looking at new scene, you can see that both clients are in the same scene. The scene main was also unloaded as it's no longer being used by clients. To prove that the scene manager is loading by scene handle, I'm going to change this code slightly, then put it back. I inserted a debug which will tell if we are loading by handle or not. Notice when we are loading by the handle that I do not include the scene name. This effectively means that the scene has to be loaded by the handle and if that handle was not found an error would throw. Just as much if the handle is not set then we load by name. The expected behavior is that the first time the scene is loaded it will be done by name and going forward by handle. I once again have the editor and build up. Let's move the client into the new scene. As expected loading by handle is false which means it loaded by name. Now I'm going to move the client host into the scene. Since the handle was set from the first load, the second client is now loading into the same instance as the first. I commented out the previous code and now I'm going to show one last demonstration. Moments ago, I said if a handle is zero and disallow stacking is false, then a new instance of the scene will be made. By not passing in the handle, it's default to zero. So let's show that now. A new build is up as well as the editor, and like before, I'm going to move the build in first. New scene was created for the standalone client. This is nothing new. Now let's move the server into the trigger to enter a new scene. Notice that two new scenes exist, each with the proper player. Easy as that, we created scene stacking. One final note, you can see that the standalone client's mesh is hidden on the client host, but collisions are still occurring. Check out the local physics feature under the scene load data's options, and if you need more information on that, it's also available in the scene load data video.